Hello there. Welcome to the world of Review Point. My name is Tony Mango. People call me your host and the founder of Fanboys Anonymous. Review Point is a podcast where I review the hits and misses of a particular film, and as you can tell, this edition it focuses on Pokemon Detective Pikachu. But first, tell me, what is your name? Are you a fanboy or a fangirl? Erm, um, what was my grandson's name again? And that is where this Professor Oak opening of the episode comes to a screeching halt, and I can't keep this going any longer. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? For those who don't know how the review point works, I'm going to be starting things off with a non-spoiler version of my thoughts on the movie, and when I'm ready to get into the specifics, I'll give you a spoiler warning. Sounds good? Well, let's get into it. So yeah, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Um, actually, before I get into the review of the movie itself, I just kind of want to give a little bit of a background to how I approached this movie and uh, how that might change compared to some of the other people that might be watching it and, you know, different eras, different generations, both in terms of age and in terms of Pokemon generations as well. Uh, I am a part of the original type of people that were marketing towards uh, with Pokemon. Uh, the series came out in, I believe it was 96, if I remember correctly, where I was like that right, uh, perfect ripe age for Pokemon to come out. Um, at that point in time, I was like nine. So, you know, being a kid at that time frame, Pokemon was the type of thing that so many people that I knew just kind of got right into it around at, at that same exact time, Pokemon Red and uh, Blue. And I even remember like the first time that I had seen some kind of interaction when it came to that. I was over a friend's house and he was playing the game and he was in Lavender Town at the time. And he's talking about how he's trying to catch this ghost. And I'm like, this sounds like the stupidest fucking thing ever. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how long after that it was before I was just like, I owned Pokemon Red. And from that on, I, you know, got really into it. I had red and blue and uh, yellow. I eventually had gold and silver. And that was it. Uh, since then, I have played other generations of the game. And I keep in touch with everything. But I haven't owned any other versions of the games past uh, gold and silver. And even though I still have all my Pokemon cards and I still have, you know... Uh, old save versions of like silver and whatever the case may be. It's the type of thing that I'm into, but I'm not into into anymore. Like I haven't seen the anime past the Johto stuff. Actually, I might not have even finished Johto and I keep in touch with like Pokemon sword and shield that's coming out. I, I watch like some YouTube videos or some news and some different things, but I'm not actually like, you know, in the trenches, so to speak. So, that's kind of my whole uh, experience going into this movie where this was made, I feel, for people that were around my age bracket, you know, uh, mid 20s to mid 30s or so. People that were into Pokemon back in the day and might not necessarily 100% be in it as much nowadays, but still enough that they could get these kind of references and still kind of know what's going on and everything like that. But at the same time, I think that this movie was built for people that are newer as well. You know, it's not just the original 151 that's in this movie. It's not just references to some older things and ignoring that this is a kid's movie. It's PG-13, though, and they actually do kind of make this a PG-13 movie because it's a little dark in some ways. And um, that's kind of a distinction that I, I want to kind of talk about as well. Uh, I have nieces and a nephew you know i i know people who could potentially take their kids to these movies and stuff and i feel like maybe there's a little bit of a warning that this isn't 100 percent as much of a kid's movie as well for sure as much as the anime i mean the anime stuff that is pure on kid stuff and this has got some darker uh parts to it and there are some jokes that I mean, they play up for more adult audience and everything like that. Uh, Pikachu says hell and damn, which doesn't matter to me, but some people might find that to be like, oh, I don't want my kids to hear the word damn proud of you and that kind of a thing. I thought at one point that he said he's losing his shit, but I know I heard that wrong. I had to have heard that wrong. You can say shit in a PG-13 movie, but I don't think that they would have had that in there. So, uh, you know, that's something that maybe I'm just kind of hearing the wrong thing. 
Uh, but yeah, this is a darker movie than I was expecting it to be. And to be perfectly honest, it's a better movie than I expected it to be. I think that, and of course I can't go into this with all the expectations in the world of being like the biggest video gamer either, but out of the video game movies that I have seen and from what I've heard about the movies that I haven't, like I have not seen Warcraft. I have no interest in Warcraft. I've not seen the Assassin's Creed movie, so on and so forth. I feel like this is probably the best video game movie, right? Kind of seems like it. Cause if you take out the idea that this is based off of a video game and you just kind of make this its own world, I buy into it. They establish a lot of the rules very early on. They, uh, they have like these different characteristics for different types of characters. You know, you see, for instance, and this isn't a spoiler, so you know, whatever. But somebody like a Machamp is doing a crossing guard thing. This is in the trailer too, so I'm not spoiling even like cameo type stuff. You got a Machamp doing that kind of a thing, but at the same time, you've got more dangerous Pokemon that are kind of a little bit more on the dangerous side of things. And if you have a Gyarados, then you're going to be a little bit intimidated by that fucking thing. You know what I mean? So I find that to be an interesting way that they, for their first movie that they went straight into, let's make it a little bit more adult. And I think that that pays off really, really well. Now it is ultimately a kid's movie and it's pretty basic. You know, the plot structure isn't the craziest in the world. It's not going to win any Oscars. It's not going to be this type of thing that makes you really, really think, you know, it's like watching American Beauty or something like that. It's not going to be the case, but it doesn't have to be the case. This is a fun movie, and this is the type of thing that throughout the entire time watching this, I'm looking around the whole screen. I'm trying to see all these little Easter eggs and all these little references, which, by the way, I got a feeling that this movie is the type of movie you could see 15 times and still just go, oh, I didn't catch that in the background. That's really cool. But I'm watching all these different things and I'm trying to see the different characters and I'm trying to go through just the visuals alone and I'm enjoying the hell out of myself. And even if some of the characters in the movie are a little weak, a little bit thin, and if some of the acting for some of those people is a little bit over the top, some of the other ones not so much, some of them much better than the others, uh, it's the type of movie that it's just fun. And... I'm going to bury the lead here a little bit, but I enjoyed this so much. This is definitely a hit, and I recommend it to anybody who's a Pokemon fan, but also people who might not necessarily be a Pokemon fan. And I say that with the idea in mind that I always go to the movies, if I can, at the very least, with a big group of friends. And we had about, you know, it's usually around like 10 of us that go all together. And some of us are people that have grown up with Pokemon to the point where, you know, in any kind of random conversation, we could just throw out like, oh, there's something with an Oddish, you know, whatever like that. Or there was somebody that was in the group that wasn't actually a fan of Pokemon back in the day. And he actually, he was one of the people I was talking to for sure, trying to get his opinion and try to incorporate that into this review. He was saying that he felt like the movie was made for him, as in... He didn't need to know all these different little things about the specifics of, you know, these types are super effective over these types and that he didn't need to, you know, it wasn't the type of thing where it was like, who is that Pokemon? Oh, that's a Clefable instead of a Clefairy, like, you know, whatever the case may be like that. He came out as, I kind of want to have some fun and eat some popcorn and get out of the house, and he ended up enjoying the movie a lot, so... It's not just for the Pokemon fans. It's also for the people that might get into Pokemon from this movie. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, that is the non-spoiler section. So from here on in, I'm going to talk more details about a lot of different things. And if you don't want to know what happens, you don't know, you don't want to know what's going on with like what certain character traits are for certain characters or which Pokemon might pop up in the movie or whatever, then by all means, bookmark this, go watch the movie, come back and check me out a little bit later on. But if you don't care, then just continue listening. So let's just dive in here. Let's talk about characters, because that's a good way to just kind of take the humans out of the mix, I guess you could say. Um, the main character, Tim Goodman, played by Justice Smith. Uh, rock solid on his end, acting wise, and just kind of world building, essentially. 
you know, he, you can feel that he is interacting with what's going on instead of just reacting to green screen elements and stuff. So he did a great job with that in a way that I think that a lot of people are going to just gloss over and just kind of think that he's actually, you know, interacting with like a talking Pikachu. Like he's clearly not. So the fact that he sells that means that he did a really good job. His character itself doesn't really have, you know, the most grandiose type of things to talk about or whatever, but he's sort of just the way for the audience to kind of get involved, and he's sort of lovable as a dork, and he's got some other kind of character traits and stuff, but it's more so he's not an annoying protagonist. He's a good protagonist. He's not the most knowledgeable person, and he's not talking down to people that are in their movie. He's not a complete idiot who's just kind of a pain in the butt to sit through or whatever. He's what you would want in a protagonist, you know, for any kind of movies like this. Can't quite say the same for Lucy Stevens, uh, the main female lead in this, who's the love interest and whatever. She kind of felt a little bit ham-fisted to me, and I just wasn't the biggest fan of her character. And the acting as well, to go along with it, just maybe a different uh, actress would have pulled it off a little bit better, but I don't think it's necessarily her fault. I think it's just kind of the part Plus that, uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but Lucy is there, at, you know, not only to just be, like, the main girl in the whole thing, but also to be the love interest and to also formulate all the stuff that comes with the news side of things. So she does serve a pot, uh, plot purpose and everything. She's not, like, a useless addition or anything like that. Just didn't really dig the character. And she'd be the type of person that if they did a sequel to this, I'd be fine with them not having her return. The villains of the movie, uh, which are the Cliffords, kind of. It's mostly Howard Clifford, Bill Nye, and uh, his son, Roger Clifford, who, spoiler again, is not really necessarily a villain. They are fine. They're just sort of whatever. Yeah, you know, Bill Nye plays the part well enough. He's not going to win an Oscar, as I said before. No Oscars on, you know, like the acting side of things on this. But at the same time, He's just playing the stereotypical big business owner, uh, older villain type kind of character, and that's perfectly fine. You know, he doesn't need to be the most complex villain out there. It's not like we're doing a villain study here. Lieutenant Yoshida, Ken Watanabe's fun. I like him, so he's cool. Uh, <laughs> everybody else, really, for the most part, is just sort of um, like a nothing almost. There's a Dopinder from Deadpool is in this movie as Jack, and he's only in one scene but I really would have liked to have seen more of him. So he was a hit for sure. And uh, who else we have here? Uh, Ms. Norman is something that I find really funny. She is a non-speaking role, and it turns out that she is a ditto. And I thought that that was absolutely hilarious. That was a big hit. Seeing the beady-eyed version of that and everything, very uh, just awesome. That Those are the types of moments in this movie that are major hits because – the Ditto stuff, that's something from my childhood, you know, the idea that this Ditto can make these copies of other things and it still has its, you know, its weird little Ditto face. So to make that be that it's creating people and making the Ditto face on the people, amazing, absolutely amazing. Detective Pikachu in this is a great character, you know, you're going to love the character for sure. If you haven't seen the movie yet or whatever, like, you know, what? obviously, if you have seen the movie, they probably already do. Uh, he is a character that I feel they could have gotten another movie out of, you know, like people could really be into this character. Although now at this point, with the way that the movie ends, I don't know how they would necessarily do that again. And I'm not going to try to spoil everything here, just just in case, you know, I'm not going to run through the whole at this point in the movie, this happens, whatever. But I don't know how they're going to go with that in the future, but um the fact that he is, uh, well, I will spoil this, that the reason why Tim and the Pikachu could understand each other is because he has his father's soul inside of him. And now that that's out of it, you know, what are they going to do in the future? They can't really just like, oh, they merge again or something. It's kind of weird. And it also kind of brings up a question. Uh, why didn't Tim realize that the Pikachu had his dad's voice? <laughs> it's kind of interesting to think about. Uh, but yeah, this is the type of movie that, you know, the music is fine. That's a hit as far as, you know, whatever. I'm not going to probably download anything of it, but it's fine. And there's plenty of other things like the visual effects are great. They look a little bit CGI and, you know, with the Pokemon itself, but that's because they're, you know, they're fake. So of course, 
But that's not the biggest thing in the movie. The biggest thing is just seeing the Pokemon. And to see live action versions, so to speak, of like Bulbasaur, they're really cute. And Bulbasaur is not my favorite starter. It's my least favorite starter. You know, I never really would want to pick Bulbasaur. But how cute were those little Bulbasaurs just kind of like walking around and, uh, you know, doing their little thing. Psyduck is great. I loved Psyduck being basically the Psyduck from the anime and, you know, being adorable. Uh, Mr. Mime is creepy, but the Mr. Mime part, super funny. And super dark as well. So that was really a surprise that they were going into the whole like interrogation kind of side of things. Uh, it's weird because it's like there's a Seinfeld joke in this and there's like a Home Alone reference. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what year are we in? You know, uh, there's a Seinfeld and a Home Alone joke in a live action Pikachu movie. And the trailer ahead of time is. Sonic the Hedgehog with Gangsta's Paradise playing on it. And the last movie that I reviewed is Avengers with Spider-Man and Nick Fury and Iron Man and Ant-Man, but not even the main Ant-Man, the second Ant-Man. And the next movie that I'm going to review is going to be Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then I'm going to do Aladdin. Like, what year are we in? If you had told my eight or nine year old self that I would be doing this in 2019, I wouldn't fucking believe you at all. You know, it's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy. But speaking to that nostalgia in me and hitting me right where, you know, the center of my heart is with those kind of things, you're going to have it work. And it works. You know, seeing a quote unquote live action Charizard is just cool. So. I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I think that I could go on and on about some different references in the movie. You know, like, see, here's the thing. If I sat down and watched the movie six times, I'd be able to give you a list of all the little hits and misses to the movie because I'd be able to point out things like it's a hit that Mewtwo sounds like that and acts like that and that they treat Mewtwo like the the biggest deal. And it's a hit that um, Howard Clifford has Dialga, Palkia, and Arceus in these statues because he's been researching the whole, like, uh, immortality type of thing. And it's a hit that Pikachu, instead of saying, like, oh, my God, says something like, oh, my Arceus or something like that. Those are all hits. And this movie is so chock full of them that I can't do it justice by giving it a review an hour after I've seen the movie. So this is more of a repeat watch and thankfully it's good enough that I think it'll stand up to a repeat because it's just a fun movie. And I recommend it to everybody, whether you are a big Pokemon fan or not, because you might get something out of it, even if you weren't a fan. So it's a hit for sure for me, big, big fan recommend it. And I want to know what you have to say about the movie. What were your favorite parts? What were your favorite Pokemon? Which ones are you disappointed that you didn't get to see? Because I'm sure everybody has their own favorites and stuff. And, like, I like Delibird. For instance, it's a random choice, but Delibird's in my top, like, 100 Pokemon. And, uh, you know, it would have been kind of cool to see, like, a little... And And there might even be in there, too. That's the thing. There might be, like, a Santa Claus reference thing, and it's Delibird there. Or, hey, it would have been cool to see a Porygon or a Hydreigon or, you know, different things like that. Uh, Clink Clang should have been in there somewhere and might be in there. So you got to rewatch it a whole lot of different times and stuff. But, you know, maybe you're a big fan of the Snubble or maybe the biggest thing in the world to you was the fact that they had what I think was uh, Chime Echo or maybe it was a um clef key i couldn't really tell 100 percent, but just kind of like floating in there like maybe that stuff is the coolest to you i don't know drop a comment below tell me what you think and what your hits and misses were and we're gonna just kind of keep the discussion going because i feel like this is a movie that we need to revisit multiple times and talk about the potential of the future but generally speaking this movie sold me on the idea of doing live action type uh pokemon movies in the future and now i want to see 
maybe a trilogy that is the red and blue saga that generation one you know tell us what red does from beginning to end of his pokemon journey from you know talking to professor oak at the very beginning to uh battling gary in the elite four and catching mewtwo like give us a trilogy of movies because i don't think you could do that in one movie but maybe you can i don't really know and yeah i i, I loved it so great and i guess that's gonna do me in so i want to thank you all for listening to this if you want to show your support for everything that's happening on fanboys anonymous you can check out the Redbubble and the tea public shops Hopefully I can get some Pokemon designs up there. They've taken down some of the other ones in the past. So, you know, it's kind of a copyright thing or whatever like that. But, you know, we'll see when it comes to um, any kind of designs that I can think of that could stay up there. And uh, the Patreon is another way that you can show your support on the monetary side of things. But if you don't get the spare change, I totally understand. You can also support us by doing things like subscribing on the YouTube channel and ringing the bell for the notifications to be aware of the next videos that get posted here or leaving us a review or a like or a follow or whatever on these different platforms that we have the podcast side of things on or following us on Facebook or Twitter or checking out the articles and everything on fanboysanonymous.com or if you're into pro wrestling, check out smartcatmoment.com and that's where you'll find all those kind of things as well. So whatever the case may be, thank you all for listening to this episode. I will see you next time. It's time for me to geek out.